a similar guy. He was a night owl. Um, but the second he walked in between those lines, man, he was on fire. And not a night owl, I mean a party owl. Just like he's a guy that just will stay up. Like we'd be at a tournament in a room, hotel room, and I'd wake up like at two in the morning and he'd just be up. Wow. You know, and so it's just, uh, you know, just a really, just wired in a way that was really great for, for volleyball, um, for entertaining, um, a lot of fun to to play with and play in big tournaments with. So Casey and I had, a, um, we broke up from playing in 2009. Um, in 2012, I retired. Casey called me in the summer of 2012, the end of 2012, and asked me if I'd play Manhattan Open with him. I had just taken the job with USA Volleyball as the assistant coach for the Olympic team. Um, I was happy, I wasn't competing, I wasn't doing, I mean, I wasn't playing, I wasn't in great shape, but I had trained that, that, that winter because I didn't know what I was gonna do, so I wasn't sure if I was gonna play in 2013 or not. So I guess Casey called me in 2013. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna play. He calls and says, Matt, like, I'm just, like, my guys aren't good that I'm playing with right now, they're not, they just don't have experience, they're young, they're really nice guys, they're gonna be good, but like, my window's short here, I need to get a W. He's like, well, you know, we never got to play after a breakup, we could play one more event. And I was like, I don't know, man, like I'm not in shape, and like most of you guys know, you, when you're used to working so hard at something to go out and go out there without really putting the work in, I was just a little bit not wanting to, I don't know, not feeling like it's not fair to him or to the sport, does that make sense? Right. And like just to show up, just because I had points and I had the right to do it, I didn't want to just take advantage of that. But he kind of convinced me, and I was like, "All right, man, like let's go have some fun and let's go do this." And and then I started training. I was not really on the beach, but um, started working out in our gym here in Anaheim with USA Volleyball and just getting in the weight room and running and getting in shape. And so we got about two or three practices in before we went, um, which was better than I thought. And we were actually having friendlies in Anaheim with my national team. So I was playing in the day, coaching at night, and coming back and playing the next day. And, um, you know, we just, there was just a calm about us all weekend. It was, we knew that it was our last chance to do this together. I think whenever you break up, so to say, in beach volleyball, it's a breakup. And I think you both look back and realize things you both could have done better for the other person and for yourself. And so we both kind of came in with the attitude. Um, to really help each other and knowing what we had to do to win and we just were machines I mean we just did it you know we stuck to our game plan the entire time we never wavered we ended up beating the best team in the world at that time twice and on the Manhattan Pier right now our name's up there for 2013 it was the only tournament I played that year um, <laughs> it's the only time both our names are on there and the thing I really like get a lot of pride on is on the pier since about 2006, Phil Delhauser is on the pier. Uh, Phil Delhauser was a 2008 Olympian, probably the best big guy to ever play our game. He was just in the 2012 Olympics, three Olympics. Um, but there's a lot of other names besides Phil on the pier. But every time there's another name on the pier, Phil did not play in the event. So we are the only team that's beaten Phil, I think, since 2006 in the Manhattan Open. Wow. And we beat him twice. We beat him in the quarters, and then we beat him again in the in the finals. Wow. So that part's really cool. So you ever walk on the Manhattan Pier, you'll see Phil and you'll see other people, but when the people, other people are on there, they did not play. Or Phil so did not play. Yeah. So I, I kind of like that to me is a, is a huge thing for me because that means I beat the best to do it. And um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a crazy weekend. My, my kids were like a little bit older at that point. My daughter was seven, my son was five. So they were able to somewhat remember it and share that with them. So that was really, really cool. Really cool thing to, to do with Casey again, you know? It's something that, you know, it's actually kind of almost like a movie, a movie ending. Haven't played since. Oh, totally. <laughs> you know, everyone's like, want to come back? I'm like, no, nah, I think I did it right the one time. So. <laughs> yeah, you did. Well, you guys had a great partnership with the Synergy. I mean, you talk about team Synergy. Yeah. These guys had it beyond belief, and uh, Casey Jennings' wife, Carrie Walsh, was, was one of the best women's player ever. And he just we we're talking this this elite crew of, of the best athletes and performers in the world right here. And, and there's this is uh, and 
it starts off through high school and then college and then all the progression that they do and the searching that they do, it's just a phenomenal story. So let's go back to, or go to where we are today here at USA Volleyball in Anaheim, training center here. And tell us about coaching uh, the men's, USA men's volleyball team. These are the professional volleyball players. They come train with the USA team, go play professional now, and they just won a bronze medal in the Brazil 2016 Brazil Olympics. I mean, so he's got a medal from you know just a few months ago. <laughs> so it's fantastic. So congratulations on your medal. Thanks. Share the story of, of coaching, being an assistant coach, having the earning the respect of these guys that obviously you already have because of your storied career and mentoring these guys to to win a medal in the Olympics. Yeah, I, I think it was just a really good fit because one of the things we talked about I think I talked about earlier was when I helped Matt Anderson squeezing that last little bit out of him well that's just what I just did you know and so when I go I also run a, a volleyball club team rockstar volleyball club and we're in, I'm up in Carson California and I teach the younger kids a lot about that stuff but when it comes to teaching younger kids I feel like there's a lot of people qualified to do that you know and actually sometimes ex-athletes aren't the best at it because you're either really natural at the sport or you've just taken it so far that just teaching the basics isn't always that easy. Right. So sometimes like a someone coaching like a younger athlete the basics of the game, sometimes like, you know. It's challenging. Yeah, I mean it's a different it's a different thing. Now I've done that for a long time. I did that. I've done it so I know how to do that. But in general a lot of pro athletes can struggle with that. But what a lot of people aren't qualified to do is able to I think relate that journey that those guys are going on right now, which is a lot of pressure on them. You know, when you go into the Olympics, you know, you want to win a gold medal, the pressures of that. Oh. When you go, they all go, all these athletes go and play in other countries. And when you're an American on another team in another country, so it's like when Powell Gasol comes and plays for the Lakers, they go, except when they come, well, I guess Powell Gasol is the star of the Lakers, but he wasn't Kobe, right? So you right. had Kobe to help out. When these guys go, they're, like they're supposed to be Kobe when they show up. And so the pressures are great and it's always your fault when you lose. And when you win, they always pick the kind of the best player that the local guy to give the attention to. So it can, it's a lot. And we also, these guys, one of the things they do, which is incredible, is they go four, three to four months with us over the summer. They get like two days and then they go play overseas for a contract, which is eight to nine months, like a soccer season. September to the end of end of April, um, so it's a lot, right? I mean, you're, you're never your body's never feeling good. Some of these guys have been doing this for eight straight years of nonstop. I mean, uh, you, you hear you hear about the NBA guys, right? And they right. complain like one summer of going year round. I don't blame them. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. But these guys have been doing this for eight years. Um, you know, some of them do it all the way through their career. So um, I've done all that. I've been through all this. And so I think I was in a good state to step in right away and help guide them and share like all these stories. Hey, I met this guy and this guy helped me do this. And I met this guy and he helped me do this. And man, I'm like, yeah, I, I blew it at a big point, a big moment on national TV too, you know? And here's what I did to get over it, move on. And, and so I was in a good spot to kind of, to do that. And then because of my club, I've been coaching indoor, even though it's on the beach, I've been coaching indoor for a while. So I was in that, I kind of had the indoor game down too and was coaching that so it was just a good fit and, and um, I was really lucky that um, the head coach John Sparrow really sees things the same way I do so he a lot gave me a lot of freedom to do a lot of stuff on my own and um, yeah it's been a really really fun experience and I'm still getting even though I'm not playing I'm still getting to shoot to try to be the best in something and and uh, I never did get to the Olympics as a player, so even though we were so close, ranked fifth in the world, we didn't get to go. So close. So to be, I mean, that's like a, you know, that's a look back to me, you know, to be ranked fifth in the world and not get to go to the Olympics is a mo something I'm still not over, I'll never be over. <laughs> and, but I got to go do it as a coach and it's different, but really cool. And, um, and so I, you know, I, you can imagine I had a lot of motivation when I was there to give the guys everything that I had to put them in a situation. So I'm kind of in the role you were in um, with me, just of working really hard to find ways to help these guys to be successful. And in the end, 
you know, we, we were successful, but I don't know if that would have mattered because we did everything we could to get him there, and I, I take a lot of pride in that. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's so fun turning on the TV, watching the Brazil Olympics, and then watching Furby enter the arena with this whole team, with Team USA, and represent our country because there's no better ambassador for our country than, than this gentleman right here, Matt Burbringer. So, oh my goodness. I mean, so much to go over, so much to talk about. Let's let you guys start to ask Matt some questions because you're going to go live with Matt Furbringer, USA men's volleyball assistant coach, the number one assistant coach now, former, former standout AVP player, FIV player, the FIVB player. I mean, hey, you might have been fifth in the world, but you've been uh, even closer to top rank. And when you win, when you win a medal at FIVB event. That's a, during a world championship season. That's unbelievable. So uh, it's tough to to walk into the Olympics, you know, every four years and then be ranked, you know, number one or two, in the, you know, and from the from our side to to be able to get there. So I mean, your your track record, your history, your volleyball, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. Lots of love. Thanks, man. Look forward to hearing your guys' questions. But we just went beyond with Matt Furbringer. Stay tuned. You'll get to chat with him December 6th through the 13th. Look for him on the calendar. Thank you for going beyond with us. Thank you. We're done. That was about 40 minutes.